All right, welcome everyone to our, sorry, get my screen right, to our off the grid winter watering system. Uh, selfishly, I've looked forward to this one for the longest as we have uh, several improvements. Uh, well, not necessarily improvements, but water improvements for sure. Uh, we can make on our farm to better utilize the acres that we have. Uh, we got an excellent panel tonight. If you are a regular listener to this uh, podcast or webinar, you know I'm a huge baseball fan and there happens to be a big baseball game going on tonight. So if you see a bunch of scores posted in the Q&A, that is because I've requested it. <laughs> I want to watch the game in full tonight, but I do uh, have a curiosity as to who's going to win. So if you see that, that's what's up. And with that being said, if I was going to miss a baseball game that I so desperately want to see, it's because there's only one thing in the world I hate more than missing a baseball game I desperately want to see. And that is dealing with winter water issues. And our farm is definitely not immune. We may be worse than most. Uh, our home yard has about a gallon and a half uh, a minute of water available for 200 cows plus calves plus bulls. It does not work. And we see uh, Melanie went out, my wife went out and took this picture this morning. This hasn't worked in a while, but I said, you can take pictures of waters all over our farm that don't work because you can't uh, make a water work that doesn't have water. So on our farm, uh, we use mother nature's watering system. So it forces us to winter cows uh, in a valley, which works great. We were chatting with the guys uh, before we came on. I think this is the best watering system of all. Uh, so you see on the right, uh, the sun dogs around the sun, this was about minus 40, and the cows um, keep those uh, tight little holes open uh, in the ice throughout the winter time. And amazing, no, no electricity, uh, no trough, no pumps, no nothing. Uh, walk down, check the water, make sure it's not frozen, and nine, nine, uh, nine times out of 10 or 99 times out of 100, it's just not. Uh, the issue on our farm is we have one, maybe two uh, farms that we can do this on. And uh, because if you've watched this webinar before, uh, you know we do a pile of this uh, uh, grazing corn residue uh, and intercrops, grazing cover crops, bale grazing, swath grazing. Uh, on our farm, we are really trying to utilize uh, every acre for uh, as best uh, to the best of our ability as we can and our biggest limiting factor is winter water pain in the ass so i uh more than anyone am looking forward to this webinar uh, the guys we have on on the panel today are absolutely fantastic uh i have got to see their winter water ideas um and of course i know <laughs> spoiler alert they are great ideas um so i purposely not asked them any questions not tried to find out as little as possible about their systems so I can come across as genuine and gonna ask questions. Um, I'm assuming if I'm asking these questions because I'm genuinely uh, in need or interested that there's farms out there that are thinking uh, the same thing. So uh, first up on our panel tonight is Phil Burney from Awoda, Saskatchewan. Phil, if you wanna take your mic off and your video. So Phil and I have been buds for Quite a few years. Uh, I spend about as much time talking to Phil on the phone as my wife. Love you, honey. <laughs> but when Phil and I get chatting, so Phil, let's try and keep this uh, in the 15 to 20 minutes that we discussed and we can talk uh, tomorrow. But when we get going, we get going. So I'll try my best to keep it uh, to keep the time limit on us. But Phil, tell us about your farm. Uh, or tell us about your operation, who you're farming with, where you're farming, and then we can get into your winter watering system. Okay, well, I'm in Southeast Corner, Saskatchewan, a uh, little town called Wawota, five miles east. Um, was in the, started out in the commercial cattle industry, went into the purebred industry for about 20 years, just dispersed this fall. Um, back playing in the, in the commercial cattle industry where I'm quite enjoying it, uh, feeding the group, few groups of steers and some cattle for other people plus uh, some pairs for ourselves and um, that's I guess we have a mixed farm we've been uh, playing around with cover crops too and quite enjoying that uh, haven't haven't started grazing them yet but that's going to happen this year uh, we've been putting it up for feed and it's been working really really good so well, Phil, I'm going to do the first, I'm going to take the first tangent off topic. I know my <laughs> wife's webinar tonight, and she's going to ask, ask Phil about all those plants going on behind him. 
I'm assuming that's also your wife. <laughs> well, I have to keep these alive. Eh? That, yeah, so do I. So I don't three plants behind here that I have to try to keep alive when she's not around. And how do you do? Oh, those yeah. plants are well, more than your life, my friend. I, I, you I think, I, I think she left a few that can go without water for a couple of weeks. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, my wife's smart like that too. She doesn't trust me too much. <laughs> you bet. So anyway, so, I just, go ahead. Sorry, no, I was just going to say, uh, unless you get something to add, Phil, we can, we can dive right into it. I got a ton of questions. Uh, sure. I, got a, I mean, I got a couple neighbors with systems similar to yours here, but uh, yeah, from, I, I'm looking forward to, to, to hearing about it and I'll just follow up. So I'll interrupt right. you when, I, when I got questions, but what's going on here, Phil? All right. So, so this one, this system has an electric eye with a, um, it'll have a wet well underneath it pumps down below. Uh, you can you can run these systems from you could run it in a yard uh, right from um, you know having electricity if you wanted to you could you could set this system up um, in our particular case we run it off a dugout with a wet well so it's it's fed by a tube from or or a pipe I guess I would say from the dugout so one thing you'd want to consider is enough depth in your dugout so that it doesn't freeze to the bottom in the winter. Um, I don't have any guidelines as to how many, how big of a dugout you need for the winter or anything like that. Um, but it, it works quite well. Um, this particular system, the, the electric eye is a ways away. Um, it, it works, you know, works fine in that. It, as long as you don't have a lot of wildlife and you don't have a lot of things that can blow around in the wind. Um, electric eyes do work by movement so if you know in our we have another system that has and we may see it in the future here with a couple of pictures i think you've got but i've got the eye really close to the trough so they actually have to pretty much stick their head in the trough before it turns on and and the downfall of that is you have to train the cows so you almost have to have it turning on easier than that to begin with once they learn it no problem but that particular system in front of you there, if a deer walks up, it's going to turn on. Anything that walks by, if there was some grass sticking up and the wind was blowing, it may turn off and on. Uh, so you do have to be a little bit cautious with that. So, Phil, maybe I, we might bounce around here. I'll yep. just, I'll, you, you'd send me a video and you and I both know the trouble. We're both idiots yep. with technology. Uh, I never got the video on and, and to be honest, the vid videos don't work super for our live audience. They come up yep. a little choppy, but this is what it looks like in the bowl. So maybe just talk about obviously okay. the water is coming from the dugout, but what's going on in the bowl? How long does the pump stay on for? How does it drain out? All, all the shit like that. Okay. So, so you can see the water coming up from the bottom of the trough there. So that, that trough's got holes in it so that if the trough gets too full, it just runs through the holes down into the wet well. So down below there, you've got a pump. You got a you got a hose coming up to the bottom there. Um, you'd be wise to put a filter on that line, uh, so that when it drains back, the, bo the bottom of the bowl drains back through the filter, and then you don't get a bunch of algae and scum and stuff like that in your wet well. Um, the other thing you want to be cautious about when you're setting this up, we didn't get this one anymore in deep enough, so that dugout doesn't have to get you know, real low before this doesn't work as well as it could. We should have had our well a little deeper because we're on higher ground yep. um, away from the dugout a little bit. Now in behind the, the wet well with the trough in top there, um, you'll see the, the green panels. So I've got four panels, four 10 foot panels with my battery box, everything that operates the systems inside there. So can, I'm looking at the first picture, Phil. That's the yeah. eye that you have right you up there. It, it's about halfway up in between the two yep. uh, the bars on the fence there. Yep. Okay. And and that one particular one, they have to get fairly close before that turns on. So I mean that there's other people probably, you know, maybe don't think that's a good idea, but it works well for us. Well, uh, I, I, I mean what I don't want the I pump would, turning off and on and discharging yeah. my battery. Yep. So what, what, like when a cow sticks her head in there to drink, she sees there's nothing yep. there, the water turns on. Yep. And then how long does that, so she drinks away for a minute and then walks away. 
How yep. long does the pump pump for after, and how long's the the drain back time? And, and you you can set that. It's all adjustable, um, and it does take a little bit of playing around to get it how you want it. Um, it you know it will stay on for varying lengths of times, and it's adjustable right on that eye there. Yeah, yeah, and I'm and there's two other things that you need to figure out. There's 24 volt systems and 12 volt systems. Don't mix them together because they don't work. Um, I I don't I'm no expert on that, but my understanding is that if you had a lot of wire, a lot of distance to go with wire, a 24 volt system would be better. Um, but don't don't mark my words on that. Ask somebody that knows more than I do about that part of it. What what's power in this fill? Uh, so so this one has uh, solar panels. Um, I've got two solar panels. I, I wish I remembered what wattage they were, but I, I like to over solar panel the, the system. I don't have any wind generators. Um, I just, if it requires one solar panel, I put two up. Yep. Um, and then if it requires four batteries, I put six. Yep. And, and we've had very good success with that. We don't have much trouble at, at all. Um, so maybe, Phil, maybe maybe talk about that. So somebody somebody will have tried uh, that's on the webinar. Will have tried the windmill. My yep. experience, uh, uh, I had a neighbor that had a hell of a time regulating it. So I mean, okay. it, it worked great because like yep. it produced power, but it's like where does the surplus power go? And I think it was it was screwing up his system. But maybe talk about uh, okay, so we got the number of panels and the number of batteries. Is that a yep. self-sufficient system? Um, yeah, in my opinion, it is anyway. I mean, I don't believe it needs a wind generation system. Um, maybe some places do. Um, if, if that eye was farther away and the thing was turning off and on more often than it is, yeah, it would, it would drain the batteries. That's why we have it like that. Yeah. Um, so in behind that panel, there'd be a battery box. And, you know, you, when you buy complete systems, they come with a plastic box generally. Um, we've gone to making a wood box with a lid that's on hinges, uh, insulated, so bigger than required with, say, two-inch foam insulation inside it, um, just to try to keep those batteries as warm as we can at 40 below. Um, the biggest problem I have is mice. Yeah, um, they'll they'll crawl along the wires and get inside there because it's warm in the winter time out of the wind. That's probably my biggest nemesis. Um, period. So if you can, oh. I, I started putting uh, steel wool in any little hole where the where the wiring or pipes or anything goes in, and and we get along a lot better now. What about would poison work? Ah, probably would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It likely would. Um, never. You know, there you go. You got to put two heads together to get something figured out. You should have thought of that, eh? <laughs> you and I do. <laughs> so, but, what, like, Phil, what, uh, like, what are we talking as far as capacity? I imagine the amount of cows is going to dictate how many solar panels and how many batteries. Yeah, that, and it, it would definitely. Um, and I actually have more experience. This system I've only had for a couple of years. Um, I have another system that has a trough. That's we're going to talk about it. Don't bury that lead yet. I'm going to, I'm okay. going to, I'm going to ask you about that, but sure. yeah, just to talk about this one, what you've had up to like, what, how many cows you've had max on, I guess. What um, that's a super good question. It was, I, I know we've had enough for that particular pasture. So we, you know, we've had 35, 40 head drinking out of this, but it was, we've mostly used this one in the fall. I haven't used this one in the winter much at all. It was kind of a backup plan if if because this is close enough to the yard that everything can walk to the yard and drink right. so it's kind of a backup plan um but you know I, I i honestly don't know how many you could water off this system so that's that's i should have researched that a little bit for you before but well it's going to depend a lot on cloudy days and 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 you know whether the cows are drinking lots or they're not drinking lots like right. a bit of energy to pull like how how deep is that uh that vertical culvert like it takes a bit of energy to pull that up right yeah i mean this this is probably only like 16 feet deep 
something like that. And, and I mean, the systems are quite a bit more reasonable when you're at that 14 to 16 feet of lift. Once you start going above that, then you require a, a pump that has a lot more, well, costs a lot more, number one. But it, if you, the, the more lift you go to, the definitely the, the higher the cost is. Yep. Um, I, I suspect that you could water, I bet you you could water 100 head on here. Yep, yep. Um, you know, I can't guarantee that, but I bet you could. So the, the only experience I have with this, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip back on you, Phil, and we're going to talk about price a little bit, but just yep. to, to let the audience know uh, that the picture on the right is actually uh, Owen's system. So if, Owen, if you're on, feel free to, to uh, comment on, on uh, anything that I, I, I've screwed up on here. But they have 200 cows in the winter on a bale grazing system on that. Solar panels will not keep up. They, I think they take fresh batteries over there every two or three days. Um, just because that, I mean, you're right. That is a hell of a pile of pull. Well, 200 cows, let's just say for round figures, uh, 10, uh, 10, or 10 gallons a cow, 2,000 gallons a day pulled from 16 feet. Like think how much energy you you know if you, we were filling buckets you and I oh yeah I, how much energy that would take for you and I to you know to 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 do that um, so and and again if I Owen if you're on uh, feel free that's what the Q and A for is for discussion but Phil what like give me a ballpark on size on this dugout because we've got a very similar system we've just got electricity hooked up which yeah. is space but. Uh, if you don't have a good dugout, which we don't, uh, you get five feet of ice and five feet of evaporation throughout the summer. There's not a whole hell of a lot of water left there for the winter, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. And then that would be, I, I think you'd want a fairly, fairly deep dugout. And, and this one isn't as deep as it could be for, for winter use either. Um, we've, we have used it into the winter and usually the ice, you know, gets a, it starts to drop in the middle. Yep. Um, so I, I don't think we'd get through the winter and we're probably, I don't know, that dugout's maybe 12 feet deep. You know, like you can see the banks aren't real high on this one. Yep. Um, I, I would, you know, I, preference would be to go to a fairly deep dugout, um, to, to, if you're going to go for the whole winter, let's say, or unless you've got something that's being fed from the bottom or something. Well, and I, like your dugout looks like a better dugout than ours, but I would say our dugout is definitely, we, we knew water was our issue. We went as deep as we possibly could. Yeah. Uh, but it looks similar in size mm -hmm. and, uh, but there's no, there's no spring, like there's nothing feeding right. it. So it yeah. evaporates five feet and we get 40 days, 40 right. days, 200 cows. That's, that's all we get out of it. Right. And not, not, not a ton of time. No. Uh, the one, the one that I use have been using for a long time is it comes from a well. Yeah. So Phil, uh, we're going to get to that one, but uh, just looking through my uh, uh, questions here, maybe mm -hmm. give us an idea on cost on this system. And if you were going to change something, what would you change? Uh, see, I, I bought that system used and I paid $2,500 for it. I mean, not crazy. Uh, the, the big changes come when you go to deeper, like if you're going from a deep well or something, like I said, those pumps go up dramatically. Um, you know, nowadays solar panels are they're not nearly as expensive as they used to be. You got to have a regulator to make sure that you know the energy you're capturing is regulated for the to make sure your batteries stay charged. And um, I guess that's about the only thing I've ever really replaced, um, other than batteries once in a while. Um, I've I think I'm on my third regulator in 20 years on that other system. I haven't had this one long enough for anything to really go wrong, to be quite honest with you. It's it's worked whenever we've needed it. You knock on wood. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and the dugout was there before. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Dugout was there before. I fenced it off um, so that you know nothing can actually get in there in the wintertime now either. Yep. And or summertime, if I don't want them in there, they don't go in there. If if the system goes down, I have a gate I can open and and they can go in there in the summer if they need to, but I, but I can keep them out of the dugout now. Nice. Well, you've talked about this. Tell us what's going on here. All right. So this one, I have a lot more uh, 
experience with. I've had this for at least 20 years, probably longer. That trough, I believe, is 250 gallons. Um, your limitation for winter watering on this system is you got to have enough cattle there to turn the water over to keep it from freezing. So in, in other words, I, I don't think you could go less than about 25 head on this trough. And I've, I've had 100 head on it. And this actual picture, you can't see it real well, but I can see it. Um, this is what happens when you have too many cows on it for too long, because that drinking tube that's in the center there, it's actually been broke out. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, so uh, the drinking tube is, is very important in this trough. These troughs are now extremely expensive in my mind. Um, I think that trough now is probably 3,000. Um, those troughs are double walled, they're insulated. So, and that's important. I'm, I'm sure you could make one. Um, you know, that's, these things work very well though. So, I mean, if you, if you amortize it over a period of time, like, you know, the 20 years that I've had this trough, really, I guess it's not much money, but so if you look on the backside, you're going to see that hose, there's a black hose coming in and you're going to see a little white thing sticking up that little white thing. All that is a piece of plastic pipe and on there is a pill switch or a low level float i think they can also be called um so that's what operates the pump so there's a, a switch in there and that, you know as it floats up to level it shuts the pump off um how does it how does that hose stay not frozen in winter so Okay, so it it's higher in the middle than it is on each end. Oh, nice. And, and the pumps allow the water to leak back. So as long as it's flat enough or, or you know, nothing can lay in the hose from your high point to the trough and it can drain back to your well or your pump, um, that's all. I, I did have a problem with this once. Uh, it took me quite some time to figure it out. The... I would go over there and that, that hose would be froze. And there should, there was no reason for it to be froze. Well, the well is 13 feet deep here, which makes it a very reasonable cost for, I can actually use bilge pumps. I can go you, to Canadian you Tire. Say your, your well you water your cows with is 13 feet? Yeah, this one is. We got, we've got some areas where there's pretty good water, pretty shallow, so. 300 feet, man, a gallon and a half. That's what I'm dealing with. <laughs> well, we're very fortunate here in that re regard. So anyway, they, um, the problem that was happening was they would, the recovery on the well wasn't quick enough. There's enough water to, to water the cattle, but not as fast as what the pump was pumping. Right. So it would, pump, it would pump it down and then it would be just getting a little wee dribble of water. And it would just keep flipping water into that pipe and, and it would gather and freeze on the outside or the inside until it was froze solid. And it took me a while to figure it out, but uh, we we fixed that by putting a second float switch or pill switch down the well. And we've got them hooked together. So it's hooked the opposite way. When the water level goes down low enough that the pump's not going to be able to pump, it shuts it off. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so then, so then it allows the well to recover. So ever since we did that, no worries at all. That fixed it perfectly. And so there's no heat in that fill? Like there's no electricity? None. That's that's an underground line to that tank. When it comes up, it, there's just oh. a hoop. It drains both ways. There's no underground line here at all. This that's is, laying right on the ground. There, there's nothing laying on the ground. That. That actually goes, the, which is too bad we don't have the pictures. You can just see the very corner of the so solar panel on the right-hand side, straight behind that. Yep. Post. Oh, 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 there's a well. Right, the well's right yep. there. Yeah, the well's about oh, 20 feet away. So in right. between the, the, this and the well, I've got two two and seven eighths tubes stuck in the ground 10 feet. And I've got the solar panel mounted on top of there at a nice angle to the south to catch the sunlight. And I just have that hose is hooked to those pipes so that it that's the high point. 
And if you get it too high and your lift isn't enough, it, it, it won't do it. Uh, yep. I got to I got to be careful how high I go here because the pump only has so much lift. And and then the well itself, um, we really don't have much there either. It's pretty simple. There's we we've got a um, an old tub from a lick tub, and we got it turned upside down with some wire poked through it and hooked on it and it hooked to the top of the well with a bit of insulation on it so that it kind of keeps the heat down there and then the top of the well is covered with uh, some silage plastic so this is a very efficient um not expensive system this this system is i i just quickly looked up some prices before i come on um it's basically like kellum's float pump system um, so that, I think they, they say that has a 14 foot lift and that particular system, they quote at 2750. So that would be probably only one solar panel. Uh, I don't know if the batteries would be included. There would be a battery box, uh, would include the pump, uh, would include the switch. The switches aren't terribly expensive. I think they're about $125. They do occasionally get waterlogged and you got to throw them away and get a new one. But the maintenance on it, on this particular system has not been much. Um, really, you know, a guy should take the batteries out in the summer and clean them up and all that. And I mean, it, it just doesn't happen here. And it's, <laughs> it's been pretty foolproof for us. Uh, what, the, the only time we really had problems was when that well was going dry on us. We didn't understand why. And then of course it would drain the batteries because the pump would just run and run and run and run. Yep. So, but once we, if, once we got that figured out, it was great. Would a spring, like if you, if you knew where there was a spring fill, would that, would that not, could you not hit that spring and, and set this system up? Pretty much. Yeah. I think you could other than you, you just have to have it so that you, your water that was flowing had somewhere to go. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah I couldn't just gather it. No, yeah, that would be the only trouble. I, I've actually seen the odd system. I've seen them in the summertime where they had them rigged up from a spring. Um, it, it, and yeah, you could, but, you know, wintertime water is no fun at all. So, but that drinking tube is extremely important. So that thing's basically an upside down five gallon pail with the bottom cut out. Um, if you had a way of attaching that, that would work well. And then, um, and the idea is the, when the cows go to drink, they could like the, it's a uh, concave. So the, the, if there's ice that forms can be pushed down. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. And, and, and when it gets really cold, uh, depending on how far away your cows are from it and how many cows you got, like you, after a while, you can figure out how to manipulate this so that the cattle will keep coming and drinking and they'll keep it open. Yep. Uh, if they don't like if you're if let's say your bed's far enough away that they only come once a day um when i go feed i would get out with a two pound hammer and give the ice a smack in the middle and take the three or four chunks and chuck them out of there and good for the day but the idea with the tube is you get to keep the heat and the rest of the drinker right right you're, you're drinking the, the water at the bottom if you happen to get ice on top or something um, yeah, we're, you're pulling water from the bottom and it's going it, to, well, ice will form less, right? Because yeah. you're, pulling, you're pulling up warm water. Right. And, and, warm water coming. Right. And you're also protecting, like if you, if you had that hole wide open, you know, you'd be spreading some fair bit of cold into the whole trough, right? So, right. Yeah. So, Phil, uh, uh, I got to, well, we got to wrap this up because classic yeah. us went over time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, what, what? No, no, no. The, obviously, it was mostly me. Uh, <laughs> what? Uh, what? Uh, what's capacity on a system like this? I guess it's de dependent on how much water, right? Well, it, it is somewhat dependent on water, but I mean, that's one tube. I mean, this this trough you could slide it out, and and uh, you can kind of see in the second set of holes there. Um, you could have three drinking troughs here or two. Right. Yep. Yep. Um you know, I, I never ever did that simply because then I think you'd have to have more work drinking on it all the time. I, I've only replaced that um, drink tube once in 20 years. And, you know, we ended up putting um, a wooden top on there 
um, and and just put the drink tube in through the wood and it's been good ever since. So, I mean, 100 cows is probably more than they would recommend for this trough, but it works good for me. For sure. Yeah. Um, but I was going to ask another question. I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to write it down, and I'm I'm saving for question period. But great job, Phil. Um, stick around for question period. There's there's been lots already. Right on. Sounds good. All right. Well, Reese, uh, you're next up. So if you want to uh, take your mic off, turn your camera on. So uh, Reese, actually, uh, we had a Facebook promo. Uh, and he showed his system and uh, Dana, our marketer, was like, hey, do you think this is cool? And I'm like, that is so damn cool. I'm like, we, you got to reach out to that guy and see if he'll be on the webinar because I got a million questions to ask him. So Reese, uh, same morning as Phil. I'll try my damnedest to keep it under 20 minutes for sure. Uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, but anyway, Reese is from uh, Milestone, Saskatchewan. Reese, tell us about your operation, uh, what you're farming, who you're farming with, and then we'll get into your system. Okay, for sure. Yeah, so uh, at Milestones, we're about half an hour south of Regina here. Um, we're a mixed farming operation, so we have out about 400 head of cattle and farm some grain acres there too. And then it's me, my father, and a hired man, and uh, yeah. Cool. Well, tell us about what the heck's going on here and i gotta say there was one picture that didn't show up here but i'm gonna ask you about the square bales like the where the uh the inlet come goes into the uh into the dugout but we'll get to that i'm sure but uh yeah tell us about your system here for sure yeah so these are uh used mining tire um troughs i guess they're just cut in half so this particular one in the picture here i think it's an 11 foot trough so it holds roughly about 1100 gallons and uh, we've got a pump down in the dugout there, kind of behind those square bales you were talking about. And it's, uh, you know, just keep it in the ice and we're pumping up over top with this hose coming into the trough, so. So I see, I see a generator here. Again, I am, I've been trying my best not to text you this stuff because I am genuinely interested in how this works. I see a generator here and I've seen a float or I see a float how, how long is that generator running? So we start that generator in the morning whenever we get down there to feed. Um, yeah. And it'll run all day on a tank of fuel. So that generator in the picture, we've since swapped it out for an uh, inverter generator. It's a little better on fuel. So it, it'll go through like a gallon a day is all. So not too much, but we just leave it run. I mean, if you're going back at nighttime, we'll shut it off because the cows aren't drinking at night. But uh, usually we just generally let it run all day till it runs out of fuel. I mean, a gallon of fuel is worth what, like five bucks. Exactly. I would be a hundred dollars to untaw water for me. <laughs> yeah, so, it's not that much when you add it up, right? So, so come, cut, let's go. Let's come back to uh, what do you have in the dugout, and then just talk about like the actual like don't but don't don't skimp on details. You we got a submersible pump, I'm assuming, in the dugout. It's hanging there. How do yeah. you keep, how do you keep it coming out of the dugout from freezing? For sure. So yeah, down in the dugout, we just buy like cheap uh, Princess Auto sump pumps. They're like $70 there, about half horsepower pumps. Um, we just go out past the ice far enough, you know, where we got some good depth of water. Cut our hole. Um, we put a two by four above our hole and dangle our pump off that. Just tie it off with the rope. Let our pump down in the water as far as it'll go. And then uh, we run our power cord up, up to this generator here. And then we just run the power cord along the water line coming up tape it to each other so they stay together. Um, then where that hole is down there, we like to cover it in plastic. And then that keeps, you know, any water running back in, it won't freeze our bales down. Sure. So on top, top of that plastic, throw square bales there and that insulates that hole. So that won't freeze all winter. In fact, we still got one pump sitting down there right now that we haven't got out and uh, I'm sure it's still fine, but. So, just... uh, I, well, I guess first and foremost, I'm looking at the size of your dugout let's talk about what you're doing for like as far as capacity how many cows are are drinking off this how deep's your well what's the longest you've had uh the cows on this system okay yeah so this dugout here it's about a half million gallons um i'm sure it's filled in a little over the years it's not as big as it once was and by the time we get to it in late fall, i stop you half yeah. million gallons give it give us some either feet or meters or whatever you want to whatever uh, you want to 
probably 16 feet deep, um, 60 feet wide, and maybe 140 feet long, something like that. Yep. And then, uh, so yeah, it's by the time we get there in fall, it's usually down, like you were saying before, right? Five feet evaporates, and you're not left with that much. But this year, we had cows down there for about 60 days on this dugout. Um, we were running about 280 pairs off this system. Um, we pulled the calves about a month in, so then we were just left with about 280 cows on it. But uh, that dugout never did run out in those 60 days. It was fairly full this year going in, though, so I think that helped, obviously. But so, it, it definitely wouldn't last all winter for that many animals. I got it. I'm just going to skip ahead here. So, yeah, that is what I wanted to chat about. So wherever you want me here, just let me know. But, like, what's heating this? It, so in the, I guess these pictures here, this blue tank there, that's a yep. Trojan propane heater. So it runs off uh, propane. It's a pretty simple system, I guess. We just got a 40 pound propane bottle there inside those corral panels. Um, there's a thermal coupler inside that pro or inside that blue tube. And then, so that just runs all day, cuts in, cuts out, and it's just uh, got a flame down there that's heating it. So it's a pretty simple setup the way it works. Um, it was a little finicky to get going, you know, get the right temperature setting. There's a, you can set it for warmer or hotter. Um, my problem with this big of a tire, it's hard to keep that much water warm. So yep. the propane is running all the time. So we ended up just turning it down a little lower and that was enough just to keep the, you know, the ice off it mostly like you can see in that picture on the left. So is it on a, it's on a thermostat? Yeah, exactly. And so the thermostat's in, in that tube there. Any... And I say this, we have not, we have not done it uh, on our place. We have the exact same tire. Uh, any benefit to covering that as far as keeping the, the whole, heat? the whole tire? Yeah, it, it would definitely be better if we were covered it. Um, a guy should have some posts in around there and throw a piece of plywood over half the tire or something. It'd keep a lot more heat in. We just, so how, what, what do you, what are we talking as far as propane? How much is it? I'll, I'll just switch the photo here. So tell tell me what's going on in this exact picture with the like there's ice on it, right? Okay, Not so, frozen ice there. Yeah. So this would have been in the morning when we first got there. That heater ran all night. Um, and the open water you can see is how much water was you know available throughout the night if they wanted to come drink. The rest of that froze over, but it's a thin layer. And that was, if I remember right, probably about minus 30 that night. So it kept enough open. If we had that trough half covered, I think it would have done a lot better. Yep. It still kept that ice thin enough. You just come with a shovel or a pitchfork in the morning and break it up and throw that ice out. So is this a permanent system or did you guys just like, you guys have a few dugouts around and you just pick this up and move it? Yeah. So this is on our cropland acres. So once the cattle come out of the native pasture in the fall, we throw them onto here till we bring them home. So it's not a full winter system for us. I mean, it could be, but um, once we move them off here, I guess we got, uh, different systems at home that we're not using or that we're using that isn't this system. Yep. So it's not, not a permanent by any means, but it works for the time being. We just set it up when we need it. I like not permanent, but I, I also like if I could do it all winter long, that would be amazing. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you could, um, we do a system like this at my yard too, in the winter time here and we have electricity there. So a little yeah. simpler, so we're not starting a generator all the time. But for, sure. for this system, you need the generator. It's closest power is about five miles away. So, so there's going to be. I can see a question popped up there. Uh, I'm assuming somebody's going to say, "What if something goes wrong here, Reese?" <laughs> I don't know what could. I I love it. Like I'm in, intrigued as hell. But it's like tell yeah. tell us something. Uh, and I know we got to. We've got a what went wrong slide, but like there must be uh, uh, something as far as pro like what happens if sure. the propane goes out for a night or something. For sure. So I guess I'll jump back to there. Like once that hose comes out of the dugout up into this trough, and then we got a pill switch there. You can see um, that yellow one in the bottom there. Yep. yep. So I guess one problem is that switch can get froze down during the day because it is riding right along that tire there. I am okay. really, we should have that closer to the heater or farther out in the open. So sometimes okay. we come back in the day and it's either froze down and it's run over. So the trough is running over quite a bit, yep. which is fine because it drains back to the dugout um, or it gets froze up and then you run out of water. And then that's where, I mean, the biggest issues lie is if it gets froze up and the cattle don't have any water, 
we don't get there till five o'clock at night to check them for the night or whatever. And they went all day with the water. And as you'll see in the next slide, uh, kind of what happens, right? So, <laughs> well, but, like, with the I propane, thought... though, like if it runs out, I guess the worst thing that happens is you get a little more ice, you got to chip out in the morning. So it's not the end of the world. No, for sure. So maybe talk about, uh, I mean, you told us, uh, uh, what a gallon of fuel a day yeah. what are you what are you burning for propane uh that 40 pound um propane cylinder there it lasts us about 10 days on setting number two so not too bad that's not bad at all yeah. so what i i just want to ask you this because uh again i was trying my hardest not to pry too much because i was very curious but you had mentioned uh about keeping the water moving versus the propane system yeah, so when we, this year we didn't have the propane here down there, just uh, didn't get it set up, I guess. So the other thing we can do is toss another submersible pump just down in the trough. I just tie it onto like a rim off a vehicle or something, something to hold it down there. Mm -hmm. Put a 90 degree elbow on it and that just circulates that water in that trough and it keeps it moving. Like moving yeah. water is not supposed to freeze, right? So exactly. So just, what, you know. and then would, would the generator power that or like? Exactly. I yeah. I have the generator running that as well. Just off a separate cord so it's not on the fill switch so there's going to be times during the day though that the generator's running and it's not pumping water right exactly i wonder like is there a, a, a like and i'm wondering out loud legit uh where you could have a battery charger charging batteries when the generator's not pumping i, I mean basically the generator's running all the time keeping the batteries charged and you just keep the the water cycling all night based on with the batteries being charged from the generator absolutely yeah i think it's a possibility you could do just throw a 12 volt pump in there instead um another thing we've tried i guess is throwing a oh like a bubbler in there a 12 volt bubbler you'd use in a fish tank almost yep yep just to have some air coming up and uh we've tried that just a little bit and so i don't have much data on it but it's another option that the 12 volt system could be using right so yeah i it's not that I don't like the the propane uh, side of it, but if I got it, like, I am going to do this, by the way, Reese. <laughs> like, and I've got my, my wife and uh, my brother and his partner are all on tonight. We're all very curious about this. Uh, yeah, because we've got dugouts all over the farm. Probably they need, a lot of them need to be deepened, but, you know, it saves you building the trench and the vertical, uh, uh, the vertical culverts. And exactly. so we've got generators that we are not using in the wintertime. Yeah. Uh, and that's the thing. Yeah. You got a generator kicking around this tire. We can use it in the summer if we need, but it's just so simple to go chop a hole in the ice and throw a pump in there and you're set up. And, you, you know, we don't know where we'll be all the time on which pasture and the season. So it's hard to install a permanent system there, put a well in, right? So, well, and Kobe and I were chatting earlier today and it's, he's like, uh, even though, even the systems that have heat hooked up to them, we still need to check those every single day because a flow can stick up, a flow can stay, you know, can drop down or stick up. It's like minus 40 and keeping water unthawed. It, it, there's no foolproof system. It's the exactly. reason, it's the reason why we have this many people on tonight is because like, this is a huge issue for everyone. So, I mean, if we can get past the, yeah, we got to check it every day and that's okay. It's like, I, I mean, as far as off the grid in the middle of nowhere, I, I I have not seen another system that looks like this, which is neat. I don't did did you find this from someone or um kind of sort of yeah the greener pasture ranching is uh, Steve Kenyon there he kind of had a system like this I just modified it with these tire troughs so um, we stock these troughs and sell them so they're kind of a dime a dozen for us so they're easy to put up and so we like using them and you know they're insulated a little too they're yeah. three inches thick of rubber there so they help and. We just find it's easier, you know, if even if it does freeze over at night, you're chopping ice at waist height for spending down in the dugout. Um, yeah. The cows are never standing around waiting to drink, really. Yeah. You can get a whole bunch of cattle in there drinking, so they're not fighting over water when they do come. Well, let's talk about it. Yeah. Talk about what's uh, what's drinking, what's your capacity? I guess maybe, like, is it, do you have this in just one spot, or when the cows move to more residue grazing can you pick this up and move it yeah so this tire we just leave here um we've got other tires just set all over the place there we find them just easier to leave here because that center plug there is quick creep so if we pick that up and moved it it would either crack or something or you'd have to reseal it right so 
we just leave it there. But I guess what you're limited to here is how big your pump is. If our pump's not keeping up to this, you know, if, if they come in and all these cows are drinking, our pump might not keep up to it with that one inch hose. Um, so when there is more cattle, we throw a two inch pump, um, some pump in there, use a two inch hose. And that's about our limiting factor there is. What, uh, cause we use like a, a, a one inch hose on a, on a sump pump at home. As long as there's water in there, it's like, it can run a long time. And there's a hell of a reservoir there. Exactly. Um, but what, like what, I'm looking at the hose, like, I don't know, is that the two inch hose or? That's what? the inch hose there, yeah. The inch hose. So it's like, what would capacity be on that? Well, um, like particular this year, I guess, with that inch hose, there was, yeah, the 280 pairs there. Um, it probably takes half an hour to fill that trough up, I'd say. Um, the only problem, if you come in the morning and they drank it down overnight, that's when you'll get into issues with them fighting around the trough, just because you're trying to catch up, right? But if you if they're going in, if they come to drink after they eat and that trough's full, it'll never run out on them. Yeah, because they, I mean, they come, they just cycle up, right? Exactly. And, they'll, and they'll just do that all day. So I get it, Reese, I got to give you credit. I already have, but now that we have an audience, uh, we have this exact same tire, uh, all, not the exact same setup. Our setup's uh, pretty similar to Phil's. It just pumps into a tire yeah. and uh, uh, the the float froze up and went and broke the, the float down, water started running, but we had 200 cows that were looking to drink all at once. And we had a calf that got pushed in and didn't get out. And I did not take a picture of that. <laughs> we got the calf out and, and it's dog that food. No but, but I'm giving you ample, ample amounts of credit. Uh, I'm a pretty open book, um, but you had something similar happen here where it's like, Good. I know you said your dad took the picture and sent it to you, but like, good for you to uh, to put this out there. This, every single person that's on tonight has had something similar happen to this, and this is how we learn. Because uh, you had a, a screw up, and all of us can learn from uh, what happened to you. So tell us what happened here. Yeah, for sure. So I mean, it's one of the mishaps and that can happen. So I guess what happened here, this was later in the day when we went back to shut that generator off at night. So in the morning, there was good water there. And it was pumping. It was full. Everything was drinking. Then you can see that yellow float right behind that calf. Um, it was froze up, I guess, at the time. He must have knocked it off eventually. But uh, it got froze up and that trough went dry, I guess, is what happened. So everything was in there trying to get that last little bit. Um, Dad had already pulled this calf's head out of this panel, I guess. But he got thrown in that trough. And his head got stuck in between that panel there. So he got, him, got caught upside down going in for a drink. And it's just one of those things, too many cattle trying to drink at once for that last little bit. So I mean, the no cows, we don't no have really have a problem with those cows getting in there. They can get out, but the calves have a tough time stepping back out if they do get pushed in. So, so uh, there must have been uh, hellishly uh, cold temperatures. Like I'm looking at that ice, it's probably six inches. Yeah. We would have still had the heater on it. So is that an issue or like, so this was, uh, I guess this picture was later this year. We didn't have that heater in there this year. Okay. So we, we were just chopping ice every morning. So that ice there was pretty much just staying in the center of the trough. We were just chopping a drinking area on the outside of the trough, right? like say a foot wide all the way around. And that ice was kind of giving us some insulation actually. So sure. we, do the, we do the same thing. Yeah. We kind of let it freeze over and the ice makes the, or plywood top, right? Exactly. Yeah. Self-made. So that's what's going on here. Why there was so much ice there that day. Yeah. So I, you know what, I'll do you a favor. I'll swap the photo, uh, but talk about uh, cost. Uh, I mean, how long are you guys doing it and changes you would make? For sure. So uh, I guess cost wise, like those tires are on you about $800, $700, $800. And then another couple hundred for the quick crete. Um, that, Propane heater is the expensive part too. It's probably a good thousand dollars when I bought it. We've had that for a few years, so I can only imagine what it's worth now. Um, the float switch we use is just from Princess Auto. I think they're like $50. They're not too much. Um, same with those sump pumps. We just Princess Auto or buy them on Amazon, whatever. We usually have quite a few of them in stock and our one inch hose, we just, you know, it's laying around. So it's kind of disposable, but yeah. All said and done, I mean, if you were to add up everything, that system might run you about three thousand dollars. So, if you were going to make it again, what would you do different? So different, I'd uh, move these panels around. I'd have the, 
you know, just the two panels meeting at the center of the trough instead of this wide area like this. Um, yeah, that's make, the, make the point at the at the trough. Exactly. Yeah, that's where I got into trouble with this calf getting stuck in the side like this. Um, that and then a uh, overflow hose would be an ideal thing. Um, either bring it up out the center of that um, center plug there, or just cut a hole in the side of the tire. So if that float switch does stick down and it's running all day, it so drains back in one spot. Like you mean just make a notch in the side so it, it drains back into the yeah just it's the tire is so level right now it kind of overflows all 12 feet around the tire right and if we could have it flowing back in one concentrated area where the cows aren't going to be walking through and slipping that's just yeah. a precaution i guess well and they make ruts too eh? exactly yeah and then uh, i guess one other thing we should do different is this one inch hose in our electrical cord if we could run it from the dugout up to this tire trough in a bigger hose, that way the cows aren't stepping on it and pushing it into the mud when, you know, if it is muddy out or even into the snow. So that's one problem that can happen. If the hose gets pushed down, it won't drain back all the way and then our hose will freeze up. But right now this hose is at a pretty good angle. So it all drains right back to that sump pump. I think you've answered everything on my list. You got anything else to add? Just like, I, I imagine there are people that are on tonight, aka my siblings and possibly my wife, uh, who are going to say, I got, we have three quarters of land where we could do this. Uh, best advice for somebody that's starting out? I guess you just uh, get it set up and it's almost trial and error. I mean, it's what works for me and I might not work for you in the best way, but uh, you just got to do it. And I it guess just... Like it seems like we get way more snow. I don't know. I don't well, know. Well, yeah, this picture here doesn't have much snow, but when we were done using this trough this year, um, it was pretty much level with snow. It's in the bottom of a coulee. Um, we couldn't drive down to it either. So it, this is a good picture, bad representation of how much snow we have, I guess. I wonder, I, I got one other question, and this is a personal question. Uh, what about putting, like, like, as long as that hose would drain back, how close do you, like, how close do you, because you've got the generator, we're not hurting for power, how close does the trough need to be to the dugout? I don't think there's really any limit on it. As long as your pump will pump it and that hose is set to drain back. Um, personally, I'd like it farther away than mine is, just so that all this manure is not concentrated running right into the dugout in springtime. Right. When it does, right? Um, ideally, I'd like to have it further away. Um, we're just limited on I guess how much holes we have kicking around is our problem. So, you, <laughs> well, you can I, I it mean, as far as you want. Uh, well, I was like, I have a quarter section in mind where the dugout is like it's in it's in a kind of a slough, right? Uh, but probably not three hundred yards away. Oh, three hundred yeah. yards is probably lots. It's going to be I, enough. I mean, yeah. Now that I think about it, uh, but there's bush where the cows uh, there would actually be protection for the water. Uh, uh, you know, and maybe we would have, you know, I, I honestly think wind is as much of an issue with with these winter watering systems as cold temperatures, like the wind howling over top of that full water trough. Of course, there's going to be ice made. I yeah. hate being out there in that wind. Yeah. I imagine. Uh, yeah. But if you could cover it up and, you know, keep some of that wind off it, you might be good to go. But like this one's only maybe 20 yards off the dugout. It's not that far, but yeah, I guess well, you what? Just one one quick last thing, uh, Reese, because I'm sure we've gone over time. I haven't checked the time. Uh, but to make a cover on a tire that's this wide, obviously you'd probably want half a dozen holes. How would you keep the cows from actually stepping on it? Okay, so uh, the tire I have in my yard, we had covered. Um, all we did was nail together a couple two by sixes to cover the span. And we just covered the back half actually with plywood. So they only had the front half of the trough to drink with. Um, and then at nighttime, I had another piece of plywood. I just slid over top and that covered the rest of the trough, kept all the heat in for night. That worked really well. It just, to keep them out of it, I guess you could just put uh, four corner posts in around the tire, have them a little taller so they can stick their heads through almost right. Yeah. Um, we, we don't normally have problems with the cows ever going in the trough. It was just those calves we had problems with. What about, uh, just super, super, super last thing, uh, you got a tire that would fit inside a bail ring? Um, yeah, I guess we like we have some eight foot tires. They would fit in there, I suppose, right? Almost, it'd be pretty close. But I don't know what a bail ring would be. 
So whoever's out there watching, what? how wide is the bail ring? I have no idea. Can, well, can, you could just stick your head in through the bail ring is what you're saying. Yeah, just to keep them off the, the top, right? So yeah. have the top and have the holes, but then they actually have to stick their head through the bail ring. Yeah, it'd be a good way to keep them out for sure. Well, just, just get a small enough tire, yeah. Well, because that I think a small tire is a downside too, because like it's it's kind of a reservoir when you get twenty cows that show up at the same time too, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's... Uh, and and I always worry about the calves. Like, uh, it's you know a cow can reach down and push her way to the front, but I I'm always concerned like when that last last calf gets up and it's got to reach to the bottom, you know it wants to he or she wants to jump in there to get water so exactly. and that's and that's the again super so happy you showed that picture and we're able to show the humility because it's like I, I that happened to us and it, it sucked uh but again I wasn't I I wasn't putting it on the podcast I yeah. I hucked it in the bush and she's coyote bait um well anyway uh Reese thank you so damn much uh stay on for questions uh, we got a bunch more questions coming uh, your way. So, uh, Kobe, if you're there, do you want to uh, take yourself? Oh, beauty, there you are. So we got Kobe Herf from Pincher Creek. What a gorgeous town you have. My drive into town today was spectacular. The mountains in the backdrop, I bet you're used to that view and you don't realize how special it is. You're just lucky it, uh, the wind wasn't blowing. <laughs> I got one other thing to say about Kobe. I was going to make a joke to introduce you that uh, uh, the guy with the second best mustache on this podcast or on this <laughs> webinar, because I've obviously, as you all can tell, I am growing a mustache, but he's a beard guy now. So that's great. I don't even have to lie. Well, it's winter time. Come on. <laughs> I know. That's what I mean. I got to keep my upper lip warm. Uh, Kobe, tell us, about your operation. <laughs> tell us about your operation. and. Uh, your family and your farm and uh yeah we'll get into it talking about the uh stock boss okay um we're me and my wife dana um i married into this ranch i guess um we we're gonna calve just shy of 1400 cows this year and we got a 700 head background feedlot we keep all our heifers in and we've been selling our steers as of the last i don't know six or seven years and yeah, uh, there's me here and her dad's still here, um, her brother, and then we got two other guys that work for us full time. And yeah, just hanging okay. out. And uh, we only got six, so we're good. Oh, you're like half done. Yeah, great yeah, half. close. <laughs> close, close. Uh, no, I run into well i'm very good friends with the one guy at stock boss and his dad's the main guy um uh we me and dana bought where we live today in uh 2018 and i had to rebuild the corrals and everything it was a typical old farm site um so i had to change some drinkers and just to suit my pens and stuff and went with the stock boss and yeah i love him so what's going to, uh, I, I actually, uh, as a good interviewer does, does some background research. So I have done so, uh, a bit of research on this and, and uh, for everyone out there, you and I actually did meet up earlier today and we were just chatting about it. But for those people that have never used a stock boss, heard of a stock boss, what the hell is going on here? Well, I guess some good thinking. I, I don't want to give Dave too much credit, but um okay so they're energy free obviously and i'm not saying you're not going to have ice there there's mornings we go out when it's minus 30 minus 40 whatever and we bang an inch of ice off and away we go but as you're looking at the picture right now the center column is where all your water comes in and it's a leveling system you'll see the uh white pipe in the bottom there it fills each side of your drinker or whatever comes up the center standpipe and then from there it levels itself off obviously and then um yeah they're they're just really good they got good insulation i mean like i said i've i've we bang ice out of them in the morning if you do your research and go on the website and pay attention you put some mineral oil in the 
uh, centered by your float so you don't get because we haven't done that before um but you'll get a little crystallized ice or water or whatever there and your float will hang up but if you put the mineral oil in every winter put i don't know how i don't even if you go to the website it'll tell you but put a half a gallon or a gallon of mineral oil in there and bang the ice out and walk away so explain to me and i know i know you've got a cheat sheet sitting beside you dustin's there uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay why explain the other tube so we're i'm looking on the left i'm looking at uh uh three tubes going up and two of those are drinkers yep. and then sitting in your corral there i got uh one drinker and one tube what's the idea behind the like the center tube if we're using the the heat from the earth right uh how come the one tube yep. just into the drinker isn't enough uh so your your center tube or whatever that's where your water comes from so in your pitcher i can kind of see it i don't know if that's bad uh interweb stuff here no i'm just kidding um no it is but the center <laughs> tube is where your water comes in so in the picture you're looking at the sb3 or whatever in yep. in the horse pen that you're looking at the drinker that's an sb2 or whatever so it's it's a one hole drinker or two hole drinker that's the difference in the deal but the water comes in in the uh, center, in the center tube uh like the yep. let, like on the horse drinker you've got a you've got a uh one tube where the water comes in and the other tube yep. that actually so the 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 center tube we'll just talk about the one on the left the center yep. tube is where the water comes in that's where the water stays warm and distributes yep. from the center tube that's where your float and your stand pipe and everything is yep right and then so the heat from the ground and the and the fresh water coming in uh the more they drink, the warmer that water is going to be because it's going to cool off less. Absolutely, you're going to cycle it. Yep. So, so then there's uh, there. Uh, I can hear Dustin talking to you. Isn't that the best? <laughs> Listen, oh, you, you can. Up. He's he's not here. <laughs> uh, well, I, I so when you go out in the morning, I know there's a basket on top, right? So yes, sir. what? Role what role there, is well, there, you can see it in the picture on the right. There's a black basket. Yep. And then just talk about like, is that where you pull that whole basket out to dump the ice or, or what's the role of the basket? No, uh, the basket is keep like, so, well, you can say silage fed cattle, horses on hay, whatever. If they eat and, well, you know how it goes and they go to the drinker and shit falls out of their mouth and goes down in there and then it's it's really easy just to pull out and clean i mean it comes with some shipping screws in it there's usually three in a basket you yeah. unscrew them um and i think there's a video on it with the dave but i i can't say for sure yep I like he said it. just just, yep. just put a rock in the bottom and then you can dump it at any time and it, it just clean and fresher and smells better just yeah just to keep it like keep shit from plugging up the system keep shit out of there that's right yeah yep so what do you like uh i i mean i can almost smell the horse shit from that picture <laughs> so you you don't have cows on it but when you do have cows on on the system what's what are we talking as far as capacity on it uh so the sb3 you can have 200 summertime is kind of recommended but i mean that varies with weather i mean i got four here at my place that are kind of strictly horses but at my father-in-law's we got two um and we have 300 heifers there same thing we got a creek but there's a lot of cattle locked up um and then he's got a single just for the horses at his place as well but there's and we'll winter kind of some of the dink calves and stuff there too and there'd be you know there'd be could be a couple hundred head there potentially and there has been and it's no issue what would you say like on the like uh the like the the sb3 like the drinker on the left with the two holes yeah yep. what, what what would you be comfortable with as far as capacity well i don't want to throw richie or anybody else under the bus i, That's so, okay. I don't <laughs> i i don't think it's as much as um 
what they can drink. I think it's a lot about to do with your water pressure, honestly. Yeah. And I say that because the one place where we'll winter six or 700 cows, or we have in the past, we, we're not now, but I mean, it's a eight foot long Richie water trough. And guess what? When they all walk up from their feed and go for water, guess how many get to drink? About yeah. one. Yeah. So, and unless you can get the water to them, you ain't, you can, ar I'll argue with anybody about that. You can say that they're going to, well, you can't water enough because it's a mouthful for two or four or whatever it is. Well, if you can't pump the water there, then it doesn't matter. Yep. So I got maybe talk a little bit about insulation. I robbed this directly uh, off the YouTube channel, but I'm uh, glad to hear this was actually uh, on your place. So maybe talk yep. about... The, yeah, uh, the insulation video was at my place. Yep. Yeah, well, talk about... Uh, yeah, just the insulation process. Obviously, you got a water line uh, connected, but you said something interesting. I said it's got to be connected to a uh, water line with the pressure system. And you said, nope, there are people that uh, have set this up on a spring system. So maybe talk about insulation, what happened on your place. And then I got to know about how to set these up uh, from a spring standpoint. Okay, so insulation is pretty easy. I mean, especially if it's a new water, you got to have a hoe there to dig the water line anyway. So mm -hmm. it's not anything, I guess the cost of it is depends who who's around you and who can come and what they charge. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's really simple. We are on a pressured system here. We've had a drinker similar to the stock boss before on a gravity feed out of a dugout we were just and literally we we're only probably 50 feet from the dugout and it was lower and it worked um how, how yeah would that and then <laughs> what's that how would that work like if it like the, oh the the sorry the stock boss was lower yeah right yeah. sorry it, it wasn't a stock boss at the time but yeah yep. it, it does work um yep. and dustin flundra he's got a drinker at his place that's on a spring fed deal and it cycles in it's kind of a little bit more specialized kind of a drinker um they're maybe not on it hand as much but you can uh you can darn sure get them and it just cycles the water through and you got a intake and an outtake so uh 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 frank who we were both chatting with today um yep. Talked about not putting concrete uh, uh, like around the stock boss. What are you doing as far as packing it in and making sure that, you know, it's not going to be a bloody mess there come spring? Uh, we add fill. And I thought about that after I actually talked to Frank because we, in our feedlot, um, we have electric drinkers and we got concrete pads around them. And guess where I haul the fill every year? right yeah. around the cement pad cement, yeah so i mean you you can you can say well you we got to haul more fill well it's the same amount of fill you're just going around a drinker that didn't cost you anything all winter or you're going around an electric drinker that was froze probably well i'll guarantee it was froze more yeah the so only the ones we've unthawed this winter is electric so so as far as how long have you had um, like the stock boss in place for, and maybe Dustin, if he wants to get on screen, just talk about kind of the longevity and uh, I guess re longevity, reliability, and, you know, maybe in the long term, are they seeing issues or are things running smooth? Okay, well, I'll answer my part and then he can jump it. Um... I've had them here since 20, well, 2018. So um, I, 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 I honestly, yeah. The only thing I would have changed and Dave probably brought it to my attention, but I would have put more single drinkers in instead of double drinkers so that your, that water changes more. But I that's, guess. yeah, but that's the only and I mean, we're talking on water and 30 head of horses on four or five drinkers. So it's not, and at Frank's, like my father-in-law, sorry, it's no 
problem. Like on his double drinker with them calves there all winter, it's nothing. So let's say, sorry, I'm going to bring it back to me because I, I really am curious about this. Why shit. is it always about you? No, I'm just kidding. Well, it's, it's my podcast. It's called the show <laughs> show. You guys, you, you guys are new around here. <laughs> uh, so 200 cows. How could, could, if I had lots of water and 200 cows, um, I assume the system, if the water could keep up, would actually work better because we're cycling warm water in, right? But what I'm absolutely just, yep. if you if you had the water, what what could you do as far as uh or what have you seen as far as capacity? Well, I that's a good question. There's a feedlot here. Um, I don't know, it's about 10 miles from me. They put one of the, the double drinker in the SB3 or whatever, I guess. Um, they put one in uh, in a 400 head pen and they love it. Like if one. the pen rider walk by in the morning, a little bit of ice on it, maybe, maybe not. If there is, bang it off and carry on. The water runs. Yep. Um, Kate, we talked about setup. Uh, just wondering, like, cost. What for you, what did it cost to that drinker we're looking at right now? Like the, the two or the, double three barreled two drinker yeah. one what did uh i mean obviously yeah. the whole power thing is a huge cost savings but what did it what did it cost you to put in by the time she was all said and done well well it, there you go again i mean are we talking about the hoe and everything here or are we just talking about the drinker uh i well the i was on the website i was the drinker was 2500 bucks but yeah talk about the the installation i know the other guys didn't talk about digging the digging the fucking dugout <laughs> it, honestly like but well just add 500 bucks on for cost by the time you get a mini hoe whether you go to town and rent it from a rental company or you know we got a good friend that is in that business and he comes over and gives a guy a pretty good deal too so i mean it it just depends where you are and who's who you got on your side to do it. If you got a backhoe, I guess typical farmer and rancher. If you had got your own backhoe, it was probably free. And if you got a hired man and a shovel, it's basically the same thing. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Look at Dave uh, down there. He dug the hole himself. <laughs> uh, shit! I lost my train of thought. I had one more thing. Uh, <laughs> am I getting? <laughs> Am I going to remember it? No, you know what? Let's go to let's go to questions. Great job, you guys. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing here. So uh, Reese and Phil, if you want to come back on and join uh, Kobe and I, uh, I'm just gonna quickly. I'm gonna quickly come up with some some questions here. You know what? I asked you all this before we came on. Let's do it. Let's let uh, let's you guys have a time to think about it. So uh, Reese, we'll start with you, then Phil, then Kobe. Most asked question when we said we're doing a winter watering uh, webinar uh, was cows licking snow. What do you guys think? Have you experienced it? Uh, we're all cattle producers. Understand the challenges, of course. I mean, I think we'd all be lying if we said it didn't happen a, a little, but. Uh, Reese, I'm putting you on the spot. You go first, then Phil, then Kobe, and I'm going to uh, file through some of these questions here, guys. Okay, well, uh, for us, I guess we've never encountered that. Um, our cows are pretty spoiled, so they've never had to lick water. They've always got water in front of them, or lick snow, I mean, sorry. But uh, my father-in-law, he lets his cows lick snow all winter long, and he says it works perfectly fine. So his cows look in good shape, and they seem to do good, but... I think his cows have come accustomed to it. And if you don't go cut a hole for them, I guess they're going to go lick some snow and get some moisture from that. I think I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off, Phil. I think that I, I what I've heard, because there's lots of people that have told me they do it. And the key is if you're going to let your cows drink or lick snow, let them lick snow. Don't give them one day of water and two days of licking snow. And then shit, I got the, the water back going just what I've heard in my experience. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to say our cows have never licked snow. That would not be the truth. There's lots of times the drinker's not working or they're in the wrong paddock. And to be frank, when our cows are grazing residue and they got to walk up uh, three quarters of a mile to come back to the yard to get water, most of them don't. 
they they're out there and as long as you've got an energy source and the like a good energy source and the snow is the right snow like it's fluffy snow they've got an option to walk for water and don't do it so anyway sorry phil i didn't mean to cut you off oh you didn't cut me off no worries i'm still thinking they, uh, <laughs> I, I i i guess i got a Depends what you're trying to do. Um, coming from the I am just not. from the period of time that I had the purebred cattle, I always wanted to have my cattle looking the best I possibly could if people came to have a look at them. And and to me, they look better if they're on water. Does that mean anything? Not necessarily. Uh, I've I feed cattle for other people as well. Um, some have have. You probably- uh, been licking snow and they've done just fine um i'm i'm guessing that if you looked at some testing and data that that you can get better gains with water than you can with snow but um that's that's about where i'll leave it i guess uh yeah i i would agree with phil there um i mean you can provide them with the water not necessarily they're going to use it i guess there's some fat cow up on the ridge or something that doesn't want to walk down there well fair enough but at least she's got it would be my opinion and i agree with they'll do a lot better i've i've went to the feed lot in the morning and there's no water in the troughs and there's a lot of feed in the bunk so and most mornings i go there it's uh clean so i i, I do think they need it this just reminded me of a story, you guys, the back in BSE. Uh, anyway, the cows were, were uh, bale grazing on, uh, and we purposely make the cows, cows walk a long ways to go for water just so they're getting exercise. And uh, I, bought, I, I bought eight cows for $450 a, a, a piece and uh, just kicked them out January with, uh, with the rest of the cows. Good luck, girls. I don't know where you came from, but have fun. And uh, anyway, the, our main cow herd had to walk about three quarters of a mile back uh, to the creek for water. And there were only eight cows that did it. The eight cows that I, that I bought. The other girls, if the weather there was going forever, they just weren't doing it. So just a neat story. What does it mean? I have no idea. Uh, we've got a good question yeah. here. Uh, not necessarily winter watering oriented, but a definitely a good question. And I like where his head's at. Uh, how far are you comfortable having a cow walk for water in the winter? So we're going to go opposite order. Uh, Kobe, Phil, and then uh, and Reese. How far are you going to let a cow walk in winter to come back for water? Uh, we'll make some of our cows walk close to two miles. Nice. Phil? Yeah, I've, I've had cows walk a lot of various distances. I like to see them walk. I think they keep in good, good condition for calving. They're uh, they're athletic. They they don't play out if they do have to have a tough calving or something. But um, I, I'm happy to see them walk at least a half mile. I've I've seen them walk two miles too. Reese, yeah, most of ours, um, you know, they're walking about a mile when we're using these systems. But uh, most times it's they're in a smaller paddock, so they don't have to walk too far, but they'll walk as far as they need to, I guess, if they really want it. And I already gave my answer away. I like to make them walk. I, I well, our, our vet to the creek. I, what's that? <laughs> to the creek. To the creek. Yeah. How, yeah. how far is the creek? <laughs> well, it depends how warm it is, because the creek opens up spots throughout. The, if it's warm or cold, right? Uh, but yeah, your like, cow's sitting in the creek and it's running down to Ottawa. And now we got problems. <laughs> yeah, this, don't, don't share that photo of all the shit. Uh, hey, the deer do it. Cows are gonna do it too. Uh, uh, Reese, we got a, a one question uh, for you, and then I'm gonna I'm going to uh, I got a creative question that I wrote down before I started. Uh, how do you make a quick creep plug in that tire? Any problems with leakage? I can no. help. <laughs> no. Um, so yeah, they seal up really well actually. So put a gravel base in there, compact it. And then what we do, um, those 10, 11, 12 foot tires, 
dump about 18, 20 bags of quick creek powder in there and just start filling that trough up half full with water. Let her sit for 24 hours, come back, pump that water out and the quick creek set up and it's kind of filled all the holes on its own. And yeah, and it works really well. Super simple to do. Oh, that's it. eh? you don't like, you don't, you don't pre-mix it or anything. No, I'll just dump the bags in there and fill it full of water. Well, we bought a plug for ours. Like we actually had to buy it, put it in there. And it was a bit of a bitch to get it to seal. Yeah. So I tried using those uh, pre-made concrete plugs and yeah, we always had troubles with them sealing it. So this new company, yeah, they come up with this idea and it works really well actually. So, and I've used the plastic plugs too, to seal them up and they don't work as good either. I find it's a lot more labor intensive to set them up and they seem to leak the next year after winter too. But, so... Yeah. You guys, I have a question for you, Reese. Yeah. So, so yeah. You, you just you make your gravel base, then set your tire on it, and then you're dumping the the ten bags in. No, I just put the tire down, and then I just dump the gravel into that center hole there. Just you know, with the okay. payload or whatever, dump some okay. in, fill okay. it in. Like so, that hub on that tire is about four inches thick of rubber. Yeah. So that's where I build the gravel base up to, and then fill the rest full with quick quick feet there. So yeah, right on. Sounds good. I so you guys, I have a magic wand because again, this is the gym show and I get to ask whatever question I want. Uh, no, I, I was going to save this for the last question, but it, it, it's a really good dis discussion topic, I think. Imagine all of your infrastructure is gone. You don't have a dugout. Sure, you can you can keep a creek, but you don't have a corral. You don't have a, a, a Richie water. You got nothing. You're starting from scratch. You got as many cows as you have now. What would you build or what what infrastructure would you build to winter water your cows? And maybe maybe not even winter water, but what infrastructure we, would you put in place starting from absolute scratch? What would your strategy look like? Now, who can I pick on that has no time to think about it? Phil, it's obviously going to be you. We're going to start with you. <laughs> oh, thanks. But you're at the end. You're at the end. You had a dispersal sale, so you get to think about this clearly. So we'll go Phil and then Kobe and then Reese. You get the advantage of going last. Actually, I get the advantage. All right. Well, I, I don't know if I don't know if this is perfect or not, but one thing that comes to mind, I got uh, the one thing we did once was build a circular area that has a water bowl in it, and the reason I did it was so that if we had a problem, you could open a gate and everything can go for water at that particular place. And man, it's been awesome. So. I I think I would start with some sort of a, an area like that and work out from it. So I'm going to push back on you just a little bit, Phil. Yep. Uh, how about off the grid watering? Would you change anything to your, the, 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 the two examples you showed us or what's something you, I mean, you've had time to think about it now, especially with your system that's you've had for 20 years, what would you do to change it to, to improve that system? So, you know, I would, I, 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 you're hopping in a time machine and you get to be a 20 year old kid again. What do you, I, what I do would you do? do, I would use a very similar system to what I've been using with that trough. Uh, I don't have enough experience yet with the eye to love it like I want to. Um, I would figure out a way, kind of a cross between what Reese has got going on um, I've, I've heard of guys taking like two inch foam insulation, making kind of a donut out of it, um, and using that in the dugout. So the pumps down the dugout, like Reese is doing, and then using that and the bales sounds like the bales work too. And that nothing wrong with that. I, I like simple, um, and suck right from the dugout rather than having a lot of other things go on you, you might need a pump that has a little bit more lift so that maybe you could come over the dugout bank or something like that and have the trough on the other side or something to that effect but that system it works pretty darn good um i don't think i would actually you know buy a trough anymore i would think i'd make it and i might make it out of one of those tires and i yeah. might cover the top and have some drinking tubes in it uh something to that effect um, I, I don't hundred percent know exactly what I do, but it'd be similar to that. Right, great answer. Kobe, you're up next. 
No, no. Uh, I would probably do what I'm doing, honestly. I don't think I'd change much. Um, the customer service is very good. Like, I don't, there's, yes, and I, I am friends with the people that make them. I get that. But I was friends with them before, and they dealt a different deal, and I dug it up. So, I mean, I, I don't know what more to say about something like that. Um, I, as we move forward, I think we will put in our feedlot and everywhere will be more of this. They're easy to winterize. They're easy to not use. They're easy to use. Like it's pretty straightforward, simple. I don't think it'd change much. What about not in your, uh, in a feedlot? Do, do you see a uh, place for this system like on springs or dugouts to be set up? absolutely i i the one i did dig up from previous deals or whatever i would put one of these there all day long and where we winter i guess not the main bunch of cows because they're like you they get to go walk down to the river and shit in the waterton river and then pass it all pass it away there but um <laughs> I, 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 you might be trying to make me feel bad it's not working <laughs> Well, I just don't think my the, the couch could get to Ottawa, but yours up. might. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but where we winter the like second calvers and older cows and stuff, I I would put it in a heartbeat, and that's where we got that big long richy water. I mean, yeah, yeah. I do it in a heartbeat. Wouldn't even balk at it. Well, Reese. Uh, I guess um, some portable panels would be nice, like wind panels, you know, put around the waters and keep the wind off them. That'd be a start. And then uh, I guess just to speak on, I guess, our setup, if I was to use it again, kind of go with the cross of fills there with that drink tube. And I think, you know, cover that top, that tire up and put a drink tube in there. Help keep some of that heat in. Be a good way to, I guess, improve on my system. So Phil and Kobe, you got to turn your screens back on, guys. <laughs> and I want to, I want to hear your voice. Uh, I, well, you guys know how I feel. I've, I've got a shitty, I've, I've shitty system, so I'm not gonna. I'm, you guys are much more versed than this. Uh, so we, we did go quite a bit over, but that's okay because you guys, I'm not apologizing to anyone. I learned a lot from all three of you. Uh, the systems you put in. And we're like, we're bordering on the edge of uh, overtime. So one more thing, Dad, if you got time. I got one more thing, Dad. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've well, you, Phil, is pretty cool. Well, Phil, you got you you, you get a you get a final thought. Okay, okay. so everyone understands. Similar. The issue, the, everyone understands the issue that is going on with cattle producers today, and that is profitability is shit. It's helped out a bit lately that we uh, have uh, good prices, which is fine. Um, so maybe it's an opportunity to like give yourself, the most valuable thing on the farm is water by far. If we don't have water, we can't have cows there. If we can't have cows there, we can't access the grass efficiently, right? Or we can't act or, or yep. reach your, your systems similar to mine where we can't access that. Like we can't add value to our grain land because we can't access the, re the residue. So we've done this a bit. Uh, but what I, I, it's a final thought. So you guys get any final thought you want as far as, and take the perspective of a young cattle farmer that's just getting rolling, okay? It's like, what, how can we, how can we create from a water standpoint, uh, a, an efficient system that's not cost prohibitive, that works really, really great. So uh, Kobe, uh, maybe you start and fill, uh, uh, you next and Reese, I would say you get last word, but it's my show. So of course I get that. <laughs> well, I would start with number one is you don't got, it ain't cost me $5 a day to run the goddamn thing. That would be my first start. Um, I, me and uh, Dave's son, Dustin went and installed some for a good friend of mine up in Milo, Alberta, just, same thing just to save the money and you know what he's never had one we put four in that day and he is tickled pink so i don't know 
some can call me dumb and you can call my friends dumb too but we kind of enjoy them like they work good so awesome phil um i would just say somebody starting out like whether it be energy efficient watering system or whatever but just i mean something that's not going to cost you something over the long run uh there's all kinds of of things you can do go look around at other people's stuff there is some very ingenious stuff out there that i've seen that costs you next to nothing and that's where i would go i i'm very similar to kobe i probably wouldn't have that uh, the watering bowls that i have i would have something much simpler um that cost me very little and you know there's there can be profitability in this cattle industry if you're careful of your expenditures i'll say that i've been to places that do very well with very little um i guess the old k-i-s-s keep it simple stupid well said phil reese yeah so uh i guess if you're just starting out i guess i would think just you know keep it portable until you figure out what you need so Something that you can move around or utilize oh, that you have uh, laying around already. Kobe, 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 you gotta you gotta mute yourself. <laughs> Sorry, what? you gotta mute yourself. <laughs> oh. If you're talking, it's okay. <laughs> Sorry, Reese, go ahead. Oh, all good. Uh, yeah, just keep it simple and you know use what you have laying around and make something work till you can figure it out. If you're not sure where your cattle are gonna be, we'll have a system that can follow you around make use of it summer or winter time. Well, and I, to, to, to touch on all your guys' points, uh, Phil, I think, I think you probably said it the best. You got to network, you got to talk to people. Uh, I, I mean, I wish, I wish I knew, uh, uh, like Kobe system, we just put in two Richie waters at a place that had lots <laughs> and cement the whole bit. It was an ordeal. Uh, I mean, Reese, we're going to have, we got several quarters where we're going to do a system just like, like the, the one uh, you had the power and networking and meeting people and chatting with people is going to be your most valuable tool, not the John Deere tractor, not the implement or the, 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 the fertilizer dealer. It's, it's doing things like this and talking to other producers that have put brain power into not your operation, but their operation and you can rob their good ideas. So yeah, getting to know people and networking. Uh, Phil, you said it better than I, but that 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 will pay you back for every dollar you invest to go to a conference or see. I'm I'm heading to Kobe's tomorrow to go check out his system, and and I mean I don't know if we'll implement it, but it's like I bet I'll I'll under uh, get to understand or appreciate his system better and learn shit from him as well. So. I mean, I'll, add, I'll add two things for uh, with what Reese said. I, I totally agree that portable. Um, if you're going to invest in that kind of thing, like like portable, that's something you can change easily if you need to, if you're starting out. And as far as Kobe system goes, um, I've not used it, so I can't comment on it. Um, I would say regionally. Uh, Go have a look at, you know, if there's one of, of Kobe's working in your area, go check it out. If it's working great there, it'll work great for you. Um, every area is a bit different. We get darn cold here for too long sometimes. Um, just things like that. Just give it some thought. For sure. So, totally agree, Phil. And I respect your opinion. You've been in the business a long time and yeah, it's they've been where it's cold. I don't know. I think they say Manitoba can get cold. I don't know. Yes, <laughs> too fucking cold. <laughs> this has been like a like a tropical vacation since I've been here. <laughs> well, he's just happy the wind's not blowing. But yeah, no, and and they do work, and I I stand behind it. I mean, any info a guy needs, just go on the website, and if you want to talk to Dave. And don't want to talk to Dave, his number's on the website and phone me, and I'm just a customer. That's all I am. So, all right. Well, cool, guys. We've hit our uh, hour 45.
limit. So you guys did great. I thanks a million for uh, coming on. I mean, Reese, it was nice meeting you. Phil, as always, pleasure. Kobe, I'll see you tomorrow, bud. What uh, what does this pay by the hour? <laughs> oh, you're bre you're breaking up. You're breaking up. <laughs> All right, see you guys. Thanks, guys. All right, have a good night. <laughs>